Hello subscribers, this is Dr. Dhanashegar again. I am a pediatric gastroenterologist from Chennai and thank you very much for watching SS Childcare in English. I would like to discuss about a very important thing which I have always had in my mind which I thought I could not see in Google or YouTube. So I have done some extensive search and reading with different search strings and I have not been able to find this topic. Now the topic of interest or discussion today is going to be on food colorants and flavorings in children. Now one of the most important things I would like to go back is to quote a study from 2007 from Lancet which was done by the UK Food Safety Agency which was funded by them and basically they used a food colorant and a flavoring in three categories of children between the age of 3 to 5 years, 8 to 10 years and a placebo which did not contain any additives in the third group. Now interestingly there were some droppers from the study which we don't need to worry about but of the data that they have they have shown that the general behavioral score for children who actually consumed these colorants and additives their hyperactivity and behavior was worse. Now saying that we need to understand then when and what should we avoid. If you are taking a biscuit packet right now in front of your eyes please turn the pack of the pack and see what it contains. If it says it contains 40 grams of carbohydrates, you will see that 20 grams of it would be sugar. And that is basically what is going to make your child hyperactive and that's the first point. The second thing you need to understand is when hyperactivity is a concern and if you have a child who probably has or you think or the doctor's diagnosed hyperactivity and or autism, you need to understand that avoiding these colorants and artificial flavoring is very important. So how do you find out? Most of the times when you look at colorants and flavorings, there is one particular thing that is used as a preservative which is called as sodium benzoate. Now a lot of these colorings and flavorings are used to enhance the taste of the food product and also to keep the shelf life longer and that's basically why it is being used in foods. So the numbers would usually be E500, E500I or anything which starts with an E and that's basically what is added to stabilize the food and enhance the taste as well. Now saying this, this is what I would avoid if as I said there is a child with hyperactivity or autism. Sugar being the second thing. Now we also need to understand certain things like what could make the food more problems or can makes it a little bit more toxic is we are going to use food or serve food in containers which are non uh, basically coated. So like say for example I would strongly recommend the use of stainless steel plates, I would strongly recommend the use of using banana leaves for eating or even wooden plates for that reason or even you know basically anything that is paper free and plastic free. When you use a plastic product what actually happens is the food that is kept inside when you microwave it the heat actually interacts with the plastic and makes the food you know completely a bit of a problem so that's basically where things go wrong. So that's why we would advise to use things which are BPA free and which are plastic free so that the contents of the vessel or the container do not seep into the food. Avoid eating outside and that's one of the things because the colorants that are used in the food we cannot tell them how good they are or what they are. Home cooked food is best and if you're going to cook non-vegetarian make sure you cook and finish them within 4 hours after cooking. It's extremely important to understand these problems because these may become big problems later on in life. So that's the reason for actually speaking about food colorants and additives today in children particularly and how it can affect their behavior to a great extent. Although autism and ADHD is not only because of that we need to understand that these things can actually make it worse. I'll see you another time in another episode, another interesting episode with another interesting topic to discuss more on this and much more on child health and please keep subscribing and commenting in SS Childcare. We'll look forward to meet you again soon and thank you very much.